Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for our second Student Return to Campus Forum. I'm Soraya Johnson, your moderator for today's event. Closed captions are available for this forum. You can turn them on by clicking on the closed caption icon at the bottom of the screen. This event is being recorded so you can watch it later and share with family and friends at montgomerycollege.edu forward slash back to campus. You can also see the answers to students frequently asked questions about the college's coronavirus response and return to campus plans on this webpage. This FAQ page is being regularly updated to reflect campus operations as well as the latest advice and information from county, state, and federal authorities. Dr. Monica Brown and Dr. Sanjay Rai are here representing academic and student affairs, as well as other speakers to help students prepare for returning to campus. After the panelists' presentations, we'll have a Q&A session. Our first speaker is Dr. Sanjay Rai, the Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. Welcome, Dr. Rai. Thank you, Soraya, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, students, uh, uh, welcome to this information session. Uh, please attention to all the information that is provided to you uh, in this uh, information session. <clears throat> uh, for fall semester, uh, we are providing you a lot of flexibility. You have uh, several face-to-face uh, -face classes that are available for you. You have SRT classes available for you, and you also have distance learning classes available to you. So whatever works best for you, you have options. <clears throat> I will strongly encourage you to register for these classes as early as possible. In addition, in fall semester, you will also have uh, drop-in uh, tutoring services available to you on all three campuses. And our learning centers will also provide online uh, services as they have done it throughout this pandemic. Libraries on all three campuses will be open for you for five days a week. And libraries will also continue to provide uh, online support uh, as well. So with that, thank you. Let's listen to other speakers. Thank you, Dr. Rai. And now I would like to introduce Dr. Carolyn Terry, Associate Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. Welcome, Dr. Terry. Thank you so much, Soraya. And welcome to the students who've joined us today. We are so excited about seeing students come back to campus. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit today about how to create your class schedule and to make sure that you know what classes you are signing up and how those classes will be delivered. So uh, we have a couple of slides to share with you. You'll see, as Dr. Rai said, that there are several different ways that classes are being taught in the fall semester. So we will have classes that will be on campus. They will be offered face-to-face. -face. There you go. Uh, there will also be classes that will be offered distance learning. And it says in the schedule, distance learning web. Distance learning web means that these classes are meeting in a asynchronous way, meaning that they are not going to be meeting as a class at any designated time. There will still be due dates, there will be a schedule for the class, but the class will not be meeting as a whole unit together. You'll be meeting perhaps in small groups, you'll perhaps be meeting with the faculty member individually, but there will not be a class time necessarily for a distance learning web class. The other possibility is a remote class. And remote classes are probably gonna be a good number of the classes we will do in the fall. These are classes that we have been offering since the pandemic started, where the classes are meeting at a designated time, just as if they were on campus, but they're meeting virtually. They're meeting on a particular day, a particular time, and the faculty are meeting with the students as a class. And these are called remote classes. So if you see something in the schedule that says remote, that means that you need to be available at that time during the semester and you'll be meeting together as a class, either through Zoom or Blackboard or the platform that your faculty member chooses to use. 
And then finally, we are bringing more classes on campus in the fall. And we have had classes on campus ever since the pandemic started, but now in the fall, we're bringing more classes back and we're very excited that we'll be doing that. The on-campus classes will have a room and a location and a campus. So uh, we're gonna show you some examples from the schedule so that you can see what I'm talking about. So go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So this is what a distance learning web class looks like. Please notice that it has the name of the class, but when you see, scroll to over to the right, you'll see that it tells you some very important information. It tells you the dates that the class will be meeting. And remember, we have classes that may meet for the full 15 week semester. We'll have classes that might meet for 13 weeks, they'll start two weeks later. And then we have classes that will be meeting either in the first half of the semester for seven weeks or the second half of the semester for seven weeks. This particular class will be meeting for the full semester. It starts on August 30th and it continues until the end of the semester on December 19th. Distance Learning Web tells you that this class is going to be a completely distance learning class that you will be meeting with the faculty member and following the faculty member's course, but you're not going to meet all the time as a class. You're gonna have more flexibility in your schedule because you'll meet deadlines, but you'll be doing it according to your schedule within that time frame. Okay, the next slide. So this is a class that is doing a little bit of both. This is called a hybrid class. It's a distance learning class. If you notice the class notes telling you, it's a distance learning class with online lectures and discussions. So you'll be doing a lot of the work on your own time as you're following the course, but this class will meet at designated times. Again, it's gonna meet on Monday, Wednesday from nine to 10, 15. It's gonna be a full semester class from August 30th till December 19th, but you're gonna to need to be available on Mondays and Wednesdays from nine to 10, 15 to participate in this class. This is called the distance learning hybrid class. Again, the next slide. And this is what a remote class looks like. Again, it meets at a particular time. This class will meet on Mondays and Wednesdays from one to 150. It's a full class, so it meets the entire 15 weeks of the semester. And it, notice that it says the campus says Rockville, but you're not going to come to campus. This class will meet remotely. So that means that as you register for the class, you'll be contacted as the class starts that with the information to link to a website through either Zoom or Blackboard to be able to participate in the class on Mondays and Wednesdays from 1 to 150. And then finally, this is the on-campus classes. So the on-campus class has a particular time. It will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 3.50. It's gonna, gonna be on campus. So notice that the campus is Rockville and there's a classroom assigned. This is in the Science Center, room 424. So this is gonna be physically on campus. People are gonna be meeting face-to-face -face for the entire course. And interesting to note too, that this is a class that has a lab that's associated with it. Many of the classes that are coming back to campus are the classes that have labs associated. So it's important that you look to see that you register for the associated lab for this class. Many of those labs are going to be on campus in labs on the campus facilities. So please make sure that you look very carefully at your schedule to make sure that you know that your class is gonna be in a particular format, that you give yourself enough time to get from your home to the campus. There will be facilities on campus where you can do your work if you are waiting for a lab to start. Our learning centers will be available. There will be places that you can come and you can use computers to participate in a remote class, but please make sure that you give yourself enough time to travel to campus so that you're able to participate in your lab classes. So that's how to read the schedule. And I'm going to then hand this over to Dr. Monica Brown, who is the Senior Vice President for Student Affairs. And she will talk a little bit more about student services on campus. Thank you, Dr. Terry. And we look forward to welcoming many of you back um, to campus uh, in the fall. 
And as we prepare our gradual return to campus, we will continue to prioritize the health and safety of you, our students and the college employees, and we'll continue to monitor health metrics. Um, and so you should know that there will be changes as we see improvement and a need to change uh, based on the health metrics, which, which you'll hear um, about more a little later. We'll provide guidance and support for our employees as well as our students as we make our gradual return. We'll maximize access and quality of services for our students and employees. And every college unit will develop a return to, to work, and I should say campus strategy, that will ensure 100% access to support services for students. So hopefully you have seen the memorandum about our return to campus that was sent to students on June 15th. But let me share a few critical points from the memo. All students, employees, and visitors are required to wear face masks inside buildings, that is until July 1st, when the mandate will be lifted. Until then, please wear your face mask while inside MC buildings. Face masks are not required outside of buildings. All students and employees must complete the online health assessment prior to coming on site each day. You will see new signs on campuses directing you where to walk to maximize social distancing and reminding you about mask requirements. Again, that mandate has changed or will change effective July 1st. You may see plexiglass installed at walk-up consultation sites such as Raptor Central and security access points. Buildings will have signage indicating how to access them if they are not immediately opened. Classrooms and meeting rooms will have signs indicating how many people are permitted to gather there. To guide social distancing, you may see some chairs or computer spaces marked off with tape. Please follow those instructions. You will see college facilities teams cleaning all areas with increased frequency and you'll also see hand sanitizers and additional cleaning supplies for extra cleaning of desk or seating at your discretion. Now, let me share an overview of the plans for the student affairs programs and services specifically. Our services will be provided virtually Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5 p.m. through August 1st. While offices continue to work virtually, Signage will be posted to direct students on how to contact and access services, and the information will also be available on the web page. Beginning August 2nd, until further notice, all student affairs services will be provided virtually with some departments offering limited in-person appointments for students Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. However, no walk-in services will be available at this time. Again, we are updating our services as we continue to assess the situation. So make sure you stay tuned and keep abreast of any changes as they occur. Appointments will be offered throughout the week based on availability and students will be able to make appointments through department websites or online portals. Information can be found on the Student Services COVID webpage by using the QR code here. Um, I think that's coming up. And that service, again, that information will be updated routinely as things change. So now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Melissa Gregory, the Associate Senior Vice President for Student Affairs. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Good afternoon, everyone. We're really excited to begin returning to campus. I think fall semester is the best time of the year. I always look forward to it, even though it's very busy. Um, Dr. Brown reviewed how you can connect with our offices in different ways, virtually, some in person. So please do check the student services webpage um, I think we're putting that slide up. Yes, please check the student services webpage 
and look for the information on how you can uh, connect with us in many different ways and any updates that we're going to have on that. And also, if you're still thinking about how am I going to pay for fall semester, you know, that small thing about paying your tuition bill and other things, there is still time to complete your free application for federal student aid. That's our next slide. And if you've already done it, great. Um, we might be waiting for some additional documents from you. And all of those additional documents are now online, they're electronic, they're accessed through your MyMC account. And we have manuals on our webpage that can um, help you walk through that if you're doing it for the first time. We implemented this last year and it was very popular with students. Parents, not always as much, but we can help you through the process. And if you have any difficulty, you can email us or call us and we'll give you advice on how to get through that. I also would really like to encourage you to apply for a federal um, student emergency assistance grant we received money last year and this year from the federal government. And if you applied for one last year or this past spring, go ahead and apply again because we received more money. So um, we have new funds, we're awarding them now and more students are eligible for that money. So now our international students, those on F1 visas and other types of visas, um, plus our DREAMers and DACA students are eligible to apply for that assistance. And you can use it for food and housing, um, childcare expenses, or even help pay for your tuition and fees, books, supplies, other things that you need. So go ahead and apply for that if you haven't already. Also, if you do get an emergency assistance grant, or if you're getting any kind of financial aid, and after it pays for your tuition and fees, sometimes there's money left over. So that goes out to you in a refund check. And there's a couple of different ways to get that. One might be in a check from the college, and the other is direct deposit to your bank account. Now, if you get a check, cash it right away. Checks aren't good forever. So don't hold on to that thinking, well, I'm gonna use this money six months, a year down the road, cash it right away. And if you um, don't have a bank, your own bank, you can always cash the check at a branch of the bank that's listed on the check, just a little advice to you on that. But if you want your money faster and safer, you should be doing e-refund. And that's on our next slide. You should go out to the webpage and follow the instructions to sign up to do direct deposit. Our students find they get their money much faster if they do that process. It might seem like a lot to do, but it's really worth it to get your money faster, but also safer. And the last thing um, I'd like to remind students about, if you're a continuing student, you know that at the end of the spring semester, we have to take a look at your grades and how you did over the past year in all of your courses. So check your college email to see if you received a notification about your financial aid, satisfactory academic progress and follow the directions in that email. Take action as soon as possible. If you have to submit an appeal to make sure that you can keep getting your financial aid for the fall semester, don't wait. The priority deadline is July 15th. And even though you can submit appeals up till November 15th, you really wanna know as soon as you can whether or not your financial aid is being renewed. So there's just a little bit of advice on a lot of different things, applying for extra money and, and keeping your money and getting your money faster. And now I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Tanya Mason, who is our Dean for Student Success and Rothville Student Affairs, and she has some information for you. Thank you, Dr. Gregory, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm also excited to uh, be with you today. I wish I could see everybody's faces, but I'm excited to be able to share some information with you. Um, there are a number of really interesting and innovative ways in which we're able to connect with students for advising purposes. So I wanna share some details with you about that because many of you are probably wondering, well, how do I find a counselor? How do I get my advising? And so as you're preparing for the summer session two or for the fall semester, we are available to help you. Um, we're all working on making this gradual transition back to campus. But from now until the end of July, we will be available. Um, if you can pull up the webpage, we'll just pull up at least the 
um, web page that you can go to, which is montgomerycollege.edu slash can. There you'll find all of the innovative ways in which we're available to meet with you for advising purposes. So one of the things you'll notice is there's a chat feature. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can submit a chat. Um, we've spent a lot of time identifying what are some of those frequently asked questions that students are wondering about. And we've set up this chat feature to be available to you whenever you need it. Um, we also will cover that chat during business hours. So say maybe your question is a little bit more involved, but still a quick question. That chat feature um, is staffed by a live person during business hours. And there a, a counselor can connect with you and help you get the information that you need. Other ways that we are available um, now through the end of, of July, and actually we'll continue to have this available to you as well, is the online advising. So this is a little bit more in depth than maybe a chat. Um, and this would be through email. You can send in your very specific question and then a counselor will receive that, review it and send you back a response. And you can have a dialogue over um, email for online advising. And then we will continue as we have been doing um, for the last 15 months or so, we've been making available to you uh, virtual appointments. And that is through Zoom and through telephone, counselors are available to meet with you, to help you identify whatever the issues are that you need to resolve, they're here to help you. Now, during the month of August, and August is our busiest month of the year, um, lots of advising going on during that time. So, what we've done to make it easier for students is we've decided that there will be no appointments required during the month of August. And that's pretty typical because there's so many students needing to get support during that time. So you'll be assisted by Zoom or by telephone and it will be a first come first serve basis. Um, this will ensure that you get the, the help that you need without long wait times, without having to identify an appointment. This will also help us with social distancing in terms of minimizing large crowds. But I wanna remind you the first come first serve is a virtual experience. So then this will be through Zoom or it will be through the telephone. And that will start during the month of August. Then beginning um, in September, September 7th, we will have a hybrid model where we will start offering some in-person appointments. And that's gonna be on an appointment basis only. And there will be some minimal number of, of appointments um, depending on student needs. So we will be available to you uh, through that way. And then some of you, um, who have a documented disability may be wanting to utilize services and wondering how to connect with disability support services. So I would direct you also to our webpage, which is on the screen now, which is montgomerycollege.edu slash DSS. Um, so DSS counselors are available to assist you, but there are a lot of features that are available for you online to get this process started. So I would recommend that you go to that webpage. It will give an in-depth overview of the supports available and how you can make that connection. What I do want you to realize is that to be able to submit documentation uh, for an intake appointment, that is where you're letting us know that you have a documented disability and you have materials that we need to review to determine what if any accommodations are appropriate for you, that you can do 24 hours a day, seven days a week online if you go to our webpage. There are instructions there about how to upload those documents. Once you have done that, then you will be contacted um, for an appointment with a DSS counselor they will be there and ready to review with you what accommodations are appropriate and together you will figure out what the needs are um, so that you can be successful at Montgomery College. So those appointments will still be available to you. And beginning in um, September, September 7th, they will also start introducing some face-to-face -face appointments, um, again, based on the need of the student that will start, that hybrid model will start uh, beginning of September. So I just wanna remind you that we are here to help you. We've come up with a number of innovative ways to make that connection with you. Um, and we look forward to seeing you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Mason. Um, next we have Mr. Terry Evelyn. 
College-wide Director for Facilities Operations. Welcome. Terry. Good afternoon, students, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it is my pleasure to explain to you what we have done to make sure that when you return to us this fall, in the month of August, that the facilities you left behind will be in the same condition, if not better, so that we can accommodate you as you pursue your learning goals. In facilities, readiness is, is, is key, that's it. You have to stay ready to get ready. And even though right now we are in a get ready mode, I'd like to tell you that we stayed ready so that when we get getting ready, it was a simpler task for us. We stayed ready by making sure that over 300 employees over the last 16 months rotated on our campus in and out to make sure that our buildings were not compromised. You know, building is not unlike our bodies. If we don't exercise, if we don't eat well, if we, we break down. Buildings are the same. If we don't exercise them, if we don't keep them going, then when we're ready to turn the switch, they will not function. And so we stayed ready. We inspected the buildings. We made sure that they were warm in the winter. Remember, we've been gone for, by the time you join us, we would have been gone for about 18 months. We went through spring, we went through summer, we went through fall, we went through winter. And all those seasons, have different impact on our facilities, but we stayed ready. Employees were willing with you as our focus to make sure that when this time comes, and it's approaching faster than you could imagine, August will be right here in the blink of an eye, that we will be able to get ready to welcome you back to our facility. You know, so our facilities have not really changed, but we went through a pandemic. There was a virus, and so we had to use guidelines from the Center of Disease Control to make sure that though the virus associated with that pandemic did not impact our building in a negative way. And so we did things like improving our air filtration. When the air gets into a building, we improve the efficiency of the filters so that the air into the building does not bring with it any harmful um, components. We improve ventilation like anything else. If something is going to get in, let's dilute it. So normally we don't introduce a lot of fresh air into the building because it's expensive. But because of this unique situation, we introduced a lot more fresh air into our building. We rebalanced our buildings. You know, over time, like anything else, your buildings get out of whack. They don't perform to the maximum or optimal. So we re we're going to be rebalancing them to make sure that they're performing as well as they can. So what we have done beginning in June is move from a stay ready mode to a get ready mode to make sure that between June and August, we are making the facilities ready so that you could join us. And we continue to do all the things that I've just told you about, but we're taking a look at preventive maintenance. And we're gonna take a look at how you can help us clean. We will continue to clean our facility disinfect them overnight, every day. But we'll, you, we will partner with you to make sure that you can wipe or sanitize your areas to your comfort. You know? So we'll expand hand sanitizing stations. We'll install new sanitizing wipe stations in classrooms and labs. We know that labs are going to be the focus of return to campus. Many of you might have an online class, but you'll need to come to campus. So we've done a lot of things in labs. We've put on covers on the keyboards and we'll have wipes in there so you can clean. So we've done a lot of things. I want you to be assured that as I address you here today, that my confidence or the confidence of every single facility employee is at its highest level, that you have nothing to fear. When you return to our campus, the buildings will be safe, the buildings will be healthy, and there'll be a large number of employees willing and eager to serve you. So the last phase is, you know, staying ready, remaining ready. We could do all the things that I just talked about. But once you get on campus, the buildings become alive and we have to remain ready to serve you. 
as I looked over the guidance that we provided you today, that occurred to me that what we have not given you is how do you contact facilities? And we would like you to contact us. We are doing our best to make the facilities ready, but you know, we're not perfect. We might make mistakes. So we want you to tell us if we fall short. Tell us if you're not comfortable. Tell us if there's something that's that bothering you so we can respond and fix it. So I'll work to make sure that we provide you contact information on the guidance website that you will be using. Please feel free to call those numbers that I'll give you at any point in time, 24 seven. Even though somebody may not respond, somebody will answer. We work very closely with public safety. They are partners in this endeavor. And so if you ever have any doubt, they're on campus 24 seven, 365, stop by the window, and they will guide you or they will contact us to respond to your need. In closing, I wanna thank you for your patience over the last 16 or 18 months. And I'd like to make sure I join you in the excitement. If you're anything like me, I'm excited of making the buildings alive again. Our buildings on campus are not alive with faculty and staff. They are alive with students occupy them. And everything we do, every step we take, every action we perform, is focused on welcoming you back to facilities that you've enjoyed in the past. And it is my hope that you will enjoy them when you return to Sinal. Good luck with your upcoming fourth semester. And again, partner with us, tell us what we're doing wrong. And make sure that when you get on campus, it is our role to make sure that we are hospitable hosts and that we accommodate you in any way, shape, or form. Thank you for affording me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Um, we appreciate the facilities operations staying ready so that you can assist Montgomery College get ready to transition back. Um, and so I'd like to introduce Ms. Jane Ellen Miller, Interim Chief Information Officer. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Uh, I am so very happy to be here to be able to talk to our to our students, to our student raptors about the technology that Montgomery College makes available to you. I'm also going to see if I can post in the chat a link that will allow you to get to the webpage that has all of the various resources available to you. Um, but the thing that you'll really wanna remember is that there is an IT service desk and it is absolutely your friend. Um, it, is, it is available 24 seven, 365 days a year for all students to, to address any technology questions and concerns that you may have. And if you go to the montgomerycollege.edu, go into your MyMC, college-wide services, IT support, Everything that I just put on that link, uh, the link that I put in the chat is here, including how to reach the IT service desk, which you can do through email, through chat, and through telephone. Um, so just, just know that that's, that's your resource to get to everything. But also by going to this link that takes you to the IT support, it talks about hardware requirements. So as you're looking at laptops for your various programs, this is the place where you'll want to go because it'll discuss the specifications by program. So if you're an engineering student, your specifications are gonna be very different from the student that I was that was in liberal arts humanities majoring in, in English. The requirements for that hardware is very different. If you're in a nursing program, those requirements are a little bit different than engineering. But all laptops, depending up, regardless of your program, range in price from 400 to about 800. And sometimes you can get an even better deal. But it's important for you to look at the specifications so that you're not going into engineering and purchasing a laptop that won't be able to accommodate the types of applications that you need. In addition to talking to you about your hardware specifications, um, you should also know that Montgomery College makes available to you um, 
the, the access to a number of software applications that you're going to need throughout your journey at MC. So every student, regardless of program, gets Office 365, which includes your email. And let me tell you, you need to check your email. And, and you know, they, they, I, and I read this article a very long time ago when they said that email was for old people. And when you ask a lot of young folks if they read their email, they tend not to read their college email. They'll check their personal email. But the truth of the matter is there are certain documents and things that you will receive from the college, financial aid in particular, it, information about your registration that will come through your email, your college email. So it behooves you to check it. If they're talking to you about a refund check, and you're not checking your email, you're missing that information. So an email address is, apply, is, is um, uh, um, provided to you as soon as you apply to MC. And we actually keep that um, account live for you up to two years after you leave. But please, 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 as soon as you have an email account, activate it and start using it. But also Zoom, um, as you know, we've used that quite a bit during this pandemic, but it's allowed us to be able to do remote classes, online classes. It's allowed us to hold this type of meeting. So that's provided to every single student along with Adobe, which allows you to do presentations and those types of things. And then depending upon the program you're in, we have something called the virtual desktop that connects to various applications. So for example, a lot of the math applications are available to students from home because of the virtual desktop. And if you're in those programs, your faculty will show you how, if you're taking a remote, for example, um, if you're taking Minitab 19 or, science, or you need scientific viewer, how many of these things are available through the virtual desktop. Same thing with a number of the chemistry applications, um, again, available through this desktop. That, that the college is making available to you so that you can do your work both on site and remote. In, a diff in addition to um, hardware and applications, internet bandwidth is, is, is the glue that makes it all happen, right? Um, and sometimes that's a, a problematic for some of us in terms of being able to afford it, um, having access to it. The, those types of things. And what has happened is that a number of the um, internet service providers, over 50 of them in Maryland, and uh, more than three in just Montgomery County, are part of the emergency broadband benefit. What this means is if you meet certain criteria, you're eligible for Pell, you're eligible for food assistance, there are a number of your, your you, you fall within a certain category in terms of your uh, yearly income that you are avail you are you qualify to get uh, assistance with your internet service. Uh, I will post this in the chat, but it's getemergencybroadband.org so that you can actually apply online and get up to. Uh, $50 off of a monthly internet service bill. Um, that, that's great news because then there's your hardware specs, here's your internet, here's access to your applications. And then one other thing that we're gonna be doing this year is helping you make sure that your data is well protected, that the data that we work with is well protected. So we rolled out to all employees a little while back something called two-factor authentication. It's another security measure that ensures that we're protecting the college's data, protecting your information and the information of all employees. What we're looking to do this fall is roll it out to students. So approximately, there's been hundreds of students who have voluntarily signed up, but we're going to make this something that we're gonna want all students to do because we all have a role to play in protecting our data. So watch for more information about that. 
And uh, again, have a great year. IT is here to help you uh, whether you're on site or remote. And remember the IT service desk is your friend. Thank you so much. Um, great information. I know that ah, I forgot something. Oh, how did I forget this? I'm so sorry. Wireless access, wireless. How did I forget that, right? This is something that the students have been asking for. We have wireless in our buildings, but we've been asking for wireless in our parking lots and in some of our open green spaces. So starting this fall, this fall semester, we will have wireless available in every student parking lot, in most of the garages. I think there's one not yet. And then on the, in the green spaces. So between buildings where there's a lot of grass, you will be able to access wireless. So I don't know how I forgot, which is what is probably one of the most important. And, and, and again, this is really important because this was about student voices asking for wireless access in the parking lots. And again, it'll be here this fall. Thanks again. I wasn't going to let you forget. I was coming back with that. So I'm glad you, <laughs> you put that in there. So thank you so much. Um, next, I will introduce Mr. Carlos Sanchez, Assistant Director of Public Safety. Thank you, Soraya. Uh, on behalf of Public Safety, I just want to um, say that we are excited to have you back. Our officers have been on campus this entire time since everyone's been on remote work or remote learning. They've been there and uh, trust me when I tell you they miss you guys and they can't wait to have all the fun people back on campus. So we're definitely looking forward to it this semester. Um, you know, as always, our goal is to maintain a safe and secure learning environment for everybody. Uh, over the last year, we've been training our officers. We took advantage of the time that we had to train our officers to make sure that we're better prepare, prepared to serve you. For example, we recently held a department-wide implicit bias training to ensure that we continue um, to serve our mission of being a community-oriented public safety department. Uh, we have undergone a bunch of changes. Uh, one, of the, one of the big ones has been establishing a central dispatch. What this means is that now public safety has one number that you can dial no matter what campus you're on, and your call will be answered quickly and by someone who can provide you the information that you need. So please make sure to save this number that's on your screen right now into your phone. That number is 240-567-3333. Um, you'll get someone who answers and they'll ask you what campus you're calling for, but you'll be speaking to a live person right off the bat there. Our department runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we're here to help, so please, um, you know, sometimes you're not sure where to go to get the information that you need. Um, someone will be there and we'll answer the phone and we'll try to get you uh, pointed in the right direction. Now, there may also be times that there's an emergency on campus or that we have a very urgent message that we need to send to you. For example, in the winter when it snows uh, and we want to let you know that the college is closed for a snow day, that's information that you're gonna to wanna to receive as early as possible, I'm sure we all do. Um, we send that out early in the morning, so we wanna make sure you receive that message. The best way to make sure that you get that message directly from us is to sign up for MC Alert. You can do that uh, on My MC. You go to the My MC page, you're gonna see an icon and it's gonna say MC Alert in big letters there. You click on the icon, it takes you to a screen. All you do is put in a cell phone number, personal email, uh, if you choose to do so, and uh, hit save and that's it, you're done, you'll get the information from us. Now, our department is also responsible for enforcing parking on campus. And yes, coming back to campus means parking permits and the danger of potential parking tickets, which I think we all try to avoid as best as possible. So we wanna make sure that you don't get those tickets because that's, that's not the sort of welcome we wanna give you. Uh, permits will be required to park on campus. You can order these permits on MyMC. Once you register for your classes, you go to MyMC. There's a there's an icon for parking. Click on that icon. Takes you right there. It's a couple of clicks. You register. The permit gets emailed to your house. Um, but just in case it doesn't get to you in time, 
You also get an email that you can print out. You can put it on your dashboard. It's good for the first two weeks of class. Now, if you encounter any issues, you have any questions, you can email parking at montgomerycollege.edu. It's on your screen right now. Um, and your issues will be resolved pretty quickly there. There's someone that is monitoring that 24, not 24 seven, but let's call it 16 seven. Uh, so you'll make sure that we'll get you an answer as soon as possible, all right? Uh, another big thing that we're responsible for is student IDs. So we've been lucky so far that ride on in, in the county has been free, but that's gonna end here in the fall uh, as things open up. And that means that your, uh, your student ID with the current semester sticker is gonna be supremely important. So here in public safety, we're now in charge of the student IDs um, and we have upgraded our student ID system. We're, gonna, we're training on the system right now. We're gonna start issuing those IDs in August. So it's really important, as Jay Nellen mentioned, to make sure you're on top of your emails because we will be emailing out information in the upcoming weeks to tell you how you can get your ID, where you can go, uh, and all the information, the hours that our ID offices will be open and everything else. So please make sure you're monitoring your emails because in the next few weeks, you will get something from us about your IDs. Um, also, we have lost and found in our office. We're responsible for lost and found. So that's why I want you to save the number because in case anything happens, you forget something on campus, you lose something, leave something in a classroom, more than likely it's gonna end up in our office. And so the quickest way to find out if your item has been recovered is to call us. So finally, before I let you guys go, uh, the final thing is, you know, we encourage our officers to be around and engage with the college community. If you ever see anything suspicious or anything that's worrying to you, please feel free to approach any of our officers and report it. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can call our number, you can report something to dispatch there. You know, at the end of the day, we're here to protect you. We wanna make sure that our campus remains safe. Any information that you may have or provide to us helps us greatly in achieving that goal. So thank you so much for your time. We're all looking forward to seeing you in the fall and we hope you have a great semester. Thank you so much, Carlo. Um, I, again, I wanna encourage students, there are several ways to, to be informed about the changes that are happening. Um, the first is we have a Q&A, so feel free to put questions. Um, we have eager panelists that are ready to answer your questions. Um, the second is to check the FAQs on the Return to Campus webpage um, at montgomerycollege.edu slash back to campus. Um, and again, I know uh, Ms. Jane Ellen mentioned, check your emails, always check your emails. Changes are happening frequently. Um, so I will get back to our student question from email and it is from Claire. And the question is, will the classes marked remote remain remote definitely for the whole fall semester? I have a situation that prevents me from being in Montgomery County for a few days a week and if the remote status were to change at any point during the semester, I wouldn't be able to continue. Thanks. And I will turn this question over to Dr. Terry. Yes, thank you, Claire. That's a great question. And we've been asked this question many times, not just by students, but also by faculty who want to know if their classes are going to change. So let me reassure you that the courses that are scheduled as remote or as distance learning will remain in that format throughout the entire schedule of that course. So whatever dates that that course is scheduled to take place in that format, they will stay in that format. The format will not change. So you can be confident if you register for a remote class or a distance learning class, that that class will remain in that format. The same is true for on-campus classes. We have every intention that all on-campus classes will stay on campus for the entirety of the term of that class. The only caveat to that is that if conditions were to change, and we really hope that they don't, but if for some reason that we get advice from the county or from the state that we need to change that format and go back to remote or distance, we will need to change that course back to remote or distance. But we are going to be very optimistic and hopeful that everything will go forward as planned and that our numbers will continue to look good and that we will not have any bad variants that will come in and change our health numbers. They're very, very positive right now. And the good news is, is that if we do have to go remote for any reason, 
we're very well prepared to do it. It's not like a year ago where we had to change within two days. We have done a great job of preparing faculty and students and employees on working remotely and teaching remotely. So let's hope that the semester is positive for everybody and that all of our plans will be able to move us forward. But please don't worry about being asked to come to campus if that was not your planned schedule. They will stay remote because that's what we've promised to students. Thank you. We do have a question in the chat. I believe it was answered, but I will um, read it aloud. And, and Carlo, if you have anything else to, to add to it, feel free. For in-person classes, do students need a parking pass and an MC student ID for the shuttle buses? Uh, yeah, just to confirm. So parking passes will be uh, necessary. And then for the shuttle, the driver will ask you for an ID. So you'll need an ID to ride the shuttle. Okay, so there are no other questions in the chat. Um, I don't know if any of our panelists, anybody have any last minute information, um, just let me know. Okay, so I have my answer. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank all of our panelists, students who participated live, as well as the students who submitted their questions by email. If you would like to watch the recording of this webinar or stay up to date with MC's plans and guidelines, visit the webpage at montgomerycollege.edu backslash back to campus. You can also see the answers to students frequently asked questions about the college's coronavirus response and return to campus plans on this webpage. This FAQ page is being regularly updated to reflect the campus operations as well as the latest advice and information from county, state, and federal authorities. If you have questions about returning to campus, please contact studentaffairs at montgomerycollege.edu. We are looking forward to welcoming you all back to campus. Stay safe.